When it comes to research studies in, um, I, I, went, I, I went to CES a few years ago, met the guys from Tonal when they just came out. Yeah. And uh, it was actually the founder. It's a good product. He was telling me that they're running one of the biggest strength research uh, studies that there's ever been because what they've, what they've got is that they have the ability to understand who's using it, when they're using it, what they're doing, et cetera. And I saw your new product, and this is a bit of a sort of a opportunity to talk about it. But my guess is that once you've got a few hundred thousand of those out there, that you'll be able to, even though it's technically sponsored by your research, but you'll, you'll have a lot of data on what's really happening in of terms of, you know, males, females, weight yeah. ranges. Yeah, it's, no different than Tonal's data. Exactly. Yeah. So, so is, is that part of your master plan then, to be able to have some of this that, that you, you, you can't really argue Absolutely. about? Yeah. Uh, comparing that, it'll be an interesting conversation to having the data and then comparing it to what? Because like, there is no consensus of what's like the best exercise program. Uh, you know, NASA has an exercise program that they recommend their astronauts adhere to. I think that's probably the best fully thought out exercise program. Um, NASA's thorough and uh, also not biased. This is another thing I see on social media where um, this, this uh, it's sort of a internet bottom feeder trend to criticize, to do a video that criticizes somebody famous because then <laughs> you, you get. get more followers <laughs> because you got that famous person's name in there. Okay, that's fine. And, but it's like the bodybuilders who are critiquing some professional athletes, it's basically like, oh, this guy's an idiot basically because he's not training like a bodybuilder. Oh, oh, but he's not one. The guy plays basketball. So he might want to train like a basketball player. So like, and this is one thing when, when, I, uh, when I work with X3 and professional teams or professional athletes, I give them the tool. I explain how the tool works. You know, we're putting more force on the body where the body is much more capable of producing force. So it's a more efficient movement. It's more exhaustive. You're going to activate more musculature and uh, trigger more growth. If you're training for strength with it, it will induce a much greater strength response. If you're training for hypertrophy, variable resistance kind of tracks the same. It's very similar. And I'm actually building a hypertrophy program right now. I'm bringing some industry experts because I never even bothered with looking into specific hypertrophy. For me, it was strength is the most important thing. Hypertrophy is a far second, like way in the distance, almost like ridiculous to talk about. Um, that was just my position. I played rugby. I think that's why. You know, like you don't want to be a big rugby player. You want to be a fast rugby player that can deliver power and get your job done, move around on the pitch as quickly as possible. I think the, the average person isn't... They're not concerned with what the circumference of their biceps are. They're concerned with performance. Like when my wife asks me to cut the tree down in the backyard and hustle all that lumber out front so the trash guys can pick it up, like you want to suffer while you do that or you want to do that in half a day and have your wife be impressed? <laughs> Obviously the latter. So that's the kind of thing. That, that I was always focused on. So, so now, um, also in the, in the beginning, you want to be really rigid uh, in the programming because what I came up with was so different. It was like, there's only one way to use this. If you don't use it this way, you're just wrong and you're not going to get any results at all. Now, why did I say that? Especially because that's not true. Uh, <laughs> I said it because strategically, I only wanted people who really used it in the correct manner because there's any exercise, there's lots of incorrect ways to do it and then not have an effect. So basically I had a pure sample. I had users that were getting amazing results and reporting those amazing results. And people would say, well, how do you use the product? And 100% of the time they'd be like, exactly how it says out of the box. Like don't change anything. 
And uh, so now that we have 400,000 users, there's going to be some flexibility in how to apply that. Now, with professional athletes, I always had them apply it however they saw, however their, their training staff saw fit. But um, yeah, the, the, these are all the sort of the challenges that bring us to a point where Stepani's right. There's a lot of different ways to look at it. And depending on which researcher is involved, there can be, you know, like if a bunch of guys interested in bodybuilding or, or doing a study, uh, you're going you, you're gonna to be sure to look at the body composition numbers because that's really what they're focused on. They don't care about it, the rest mm. of it. Yeah, I think that's good. I, I, yeah. I, I didn't think of that. I, I'm sure as time goes on, there'll be more of these connected type of devices and companies than there'll be more data. And I think probably we'll just, as a society, we'll become a lot more knowledgeable about what, what is happening and be able to look yeah. at the numbers and interpret them. But it's, I guess it's even, even now with, with everything that's out there, it's still, still fairly new, isn't so it? So I don't know if the audience knows what we're talking about. So we're yeah, talking yeah, about the X3 force bar. So there's a new X3. Uh, you hook the bands to it. You connect it to your phone. It records the real-time force. So if you're, if you're doing a pressing movement and you know, you're using a band you probably shouldn't be using because it's too heavy for you, you see these people kind of do a half rep and then it snaps back at them. Well, that's a really low quality repetition and the software will know it because it's sampling multiple times per second to see how much force you're creating. So when I do it, I'm slowly going out, holding, you know, and not, not in the locked out position, but just short of lockout for a couple seconds and then slowly coming back. Uh, when you control the weight, obviously you're putting, you're making the target muscle do more work and from a progressive overload standpoint, that will be seen over time. You will keep besting your number. And it's amazing to have that biofeedback right in front of you. When you know you're only half a repetition away from beating your best ever, you're, you're going to figure out a way to do it. Mm. And uh, I, I think that guarantees a much higher level of success. <laughs>